More than a million people have died in traffic crashes in the United States since 1966, the year of the National Traffic and Motor Vehicle Safety Act, which led to the creation of the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, or NHTSA. During the late 1960s and early 1970s, more than 50,000 people lost their lives each year on our nation's streets, roads, and highways. Traffic safety has improved considerably since that time. The annual death toll has declined substantially, even though the numbers of drivers, vehicles, and miles driven have all increased. When miles traveled are considered, the likelihood of being killed in traffic crashes during the 1960s was three to four times what it is today. The proportion of all crashes in which alcohol is involved has also declined. The declines in crash risk and the numbers of alcohol-involved crashes are attributable to several factors, including the effectiveness of public information and education programs, traffic safety legislation, a general aging of the population, and law enforcement effort. NHTSA research contributed to the improved condition in part by providing patrol officers with useful and scientifically valid information concerning the behaviors that are most predictive of impairment. You may have seen the original video during training. Continued enforcement of DWI laws will be a key to saving lives in the future. For this reason, NHTSA sponsored research leading to the development of this new training video. Many things have changed since 1979, but like the original training film, this video describes a set of behaviors that can be used by officers to detect motorists who are driving impaired. Building upon the previous NHTSA study, the researchers interviewed officers from across the United States and developed a list of more than 100 driving cues that have been found to predict blood alcohol concentrations or BACs of 0.08 or greater. The list was reduced to 25 cues during two field studies involving hundreds of officers and more than 5,000 enforcement stops. The driving behaviors identified by the officers are presented in the following four categories. Problems in maintaining proper lane position, speed and braking problems, vigilance problems, and judgment problems. The cues presented in these categories predict that a driver is DWI between 25 and 90 percent of the time. The probability of DWI increases substantially when a driver exhibits more than one of these cues. The cues presented in this video apply to the 0.08 BAC level and above. The following examples were recorded during daylight, but the probabilities that the cues are predictive of DWI are greater at night. Also, the probability of DWI increases if the driver exhibits more than one cue. Maintaining proper lane position can be a difficult task for an impaired driver. For example, we've all seen vehicles weaving before. Here comes one now. Weaving is when the vehicle alternately moves towards one side of the lane and then the other. The pattern of lateral movement can be fairly regular as one steering correction is closely followed by another. In extreme cases, the vehicle's wheels even cross the lane lines before a correction is made. You might even observe a vehicle straddling a center or a lane line. That is, the vehicle is moving straight ahead with either the right or the left tires on the wrong side of the lane line or markers. Drifting is when a vehicle is moving in a generally straight line, but at a slight angle to the lane. The driver might correct the vehicle's course as it approaches a lane line or other boundary, or fail to correct until a boundary has been crossed. In extreme cases, the driver fails to correct in time to avoid a collision. Course corrections can be gradual or abrupt. For example, you might observe a vehicle to swerve making an abrupt turn when a driver realizes that he or she has drifted out of proper lane position or to avoid a previously unnoticed hazard. A related DWIQ is almost striking a vehicle or other object. You might observe a vehicle either at slow speeds or moving with traffic to pass unusually close to a sign, 
barrier, building, or other object. This cue also includes almost striking another vehicle, either moving or parked, or causing another vehicle to maneuver to avoid a collision. Turning with the wide radius, or drifting during a curve, is the final cue in this category of driver behaviors. A vehicle appears to drift to the outside of the lane or into another lane through the curve or while turning a corner. Watch for this cue and stop the driver when you see it. Many alcohol-involved crashes are caused by an expanding turn radius or drifting out of lane position during a curve. The research showed that braking properly can be a difficult task for an impaired driver. For example, there's a good chance the driver is DWI if you observe any type of stopping problem. Stopping problems include stopping too far from a curb or at an inappropriate angle, stopping too short or beyond the limit line, and jerky or abrupt stops. Impaired drivers can also experience difficulty maintaining an appropriate speed. There's a good chance the driver is DWI if you observe a vehicle to accelerate or decelerate rapidly for no apparent reason. Or if you observe a vehicle to vary its speed, alternating between speeding up and slowing down. Or you observe a vehicle to be driven at a speed that is 10 miles per hour or more under the limit. Vigilance concerns a person's ability to pay attention to a task or notice changes in surroundings. A driver whose vigilance has been impaired by alcohol might forget to turn his or her headlights on when required. Also, impaired drivers often forget to signal a turn or lane change, or their signal is inconsistent with their maneuver. Here, the driver signaled left but turned right. Alcohol impaired vigilance also results in motorist driving into opposing or crossing traffic or turning in front of oncoming vehicles with insufficient headway. Driving is a complex task that requires accurate information about surrounding traffic conditions. Failing to yield the right of way and driving the wrong way on a one-way street are dangerous examples of vigilance problems. A driver whose vigilance has been impaired by alcohol might also respond more slowly than normal to a change in a traffic signal. For example, the vehicle might remain stopped for an unusually long period of time after the signal has turned green. Also, an impaired driver might be unusually slow to respond to an officer's lights, siren, or hand signals. The most extreme DWIQ in the category of vigilance problems is to find a vehicle stopped in the lane for no apparent reason. Sometimes when you observe this behavior, the driver will be lost or confused, but more than half of the time, the driver will be DWI, maybe even asleep at the wheel. Operating a motor vehicle requires continuous decision making by the driver. Unfortunately, judgment abilities can be affected by even small amounts of alcohol. For example, alcohol impaired judgment can cause a driver to follow another vehicle too closely, providing an unsafe stopping distance. Alcohol impaired judgment can also result in a driver taking risk or endangering others. If you observe a vehicle to make improper or unsafe lane changes, either frequently or abruptly, or with disregard for other vehicles, there is a good chance the driver's judgment has been impaired by alcohol. Impaired judgment can also cause a driver to turn improperly. For example, misjudgments about speed, 
and the roadway can cause a driver to take a turn too fast or to make sudden corrections during the maneuver. These corrections can appear to the observer as jerky or sharp vehicle movements during the turn. Alcohol impaired judgment can affect the full range of driver behaviors. For example, the research found that impaired drivers are less inhibited about making illegal turns than unimpaired drivers. Driving on other than the designated roadway is another cue exhibited by alcohol impaired drivers. Examples include driving at the edge of the roadway, on the shoulder, off the roadway entirely, and straight through turn only lanes. In some cases, impaired drivers stop inappropriately in response to an officer, either abruptly as if they had been startled or in an illegal or dangerous manner. In fact, the research has shown that there is a good chance a driver is DWI if you observe the person to exhibit any inappropriate or unusual behavior. Unusual behavior includes throwing something from the vehicle, drinking in the vehicle, urinating at the roadside, arguing with another motorist, or otherwise being disorderly. So stop saying not a parking lot, lady! <laughs> the final cue is actually one or more of a set of indicators related to the personal behavior or appearance of a driver. These indicators include gripping the steering wheel tightly, driving with one's face close to the windshield, slouching in the seat, and staring straight ahead with fixed eyes. Some expert officers routinely scrutinize the face of drivers in oncoming traffic looking for the indicators of impairment. If you observe a driver who appears to be impaired, the research showed that there's an excellent probability that you are correct in your judgment. To summarize, the DWI cues related to problems in maintaining proper lane position include weaving, weaving across lane lines, straddling a lane line, drifting, swerving, almost striking a vehicle or other object, and turning with a wide radius or drifting during a curve. The DWI cues related to speed and braking problems include stopping problems, too far, too short, too jerky, accelerating for no reason, varying speed, and slow speed. The DWI cues related to vigilance problems include driving without headlights at night, failure to signal a turn or lane change or signals inconsistent with actions, driving in opposing lanes or the wrong way on a one-way street, slow response to traffic signals, slow or failure to respond to officer's signals, and stopping in the lane for no apparent reason. The DWI cues related to judgment problems include following too closely, improper or unsafe lane change, illegal or improper turn, such as too fast, jerky, or sharp, driving on other than the designated roadway, stopping inappropriately in response to an officer, inappropriate or unusual behavior, and appearing to be impaired. In addition to the driving cues, the following post-stop cues have been found to be reliable indicators of DWI. Difficulty with motor vehicle controls, fumbling with the driver's license or registration, difficulty exiting the vehicle, repeats questions or comments, swaying, unsteady, or balance problems, leaning on the vehicle or other object, slurred speech, slow to respond to officer, officer must repeat questions, provides incorrect information, changes answers or story. No. 
and odor of alcohol from the driver. 